technology with our own public works department to dramatically improve EMS response times. From bolstering law enforcement, implementing advanced technology countywide, to fostering safer neighborhoods on a localized level, Manatee County and the Board of County Commissioners are committed to a vision that is focused on your well-being. As our county continues to grow and evolve, the heart of our urban core holds immense potential for progress and prosperity. That's why we're prioritizing and expediting requests for affordable housing development and taking action to identify opportunities for enhancing neighborhoods and business districts. As part of this initiative, we're collaborating with the Manatee County Sheriff's Department, the City of Bradenton, and the Police Athletic League to provide support for improving the area around LECOM. This expansion will not only bring extra lit, publicly accessible ball diamonds and parking, but also significantly boost the local economy and transform the neighborhood by directly benefiting underprivileged youth in the area. The Manatee County Utilities Department does way more than manage the distribution of clean drinking water. Reliable utilities can attract businesses and industries to our area, contributing to economic growth and job creation. Not only is Manatee County continuing to expand services for our taxpayers, with the addition of 75 new lift stations over the next five years. But we're also looking to improve it. We're in the process of constructing Florida's largest low pressure membrane filtration facility at our Lake Manatee water treatment plant, which will result in consistent water quality. And our spillway replacement project will ensure improved dam safety, enhanced flood management, and increase resilience for anything that Mother Nature throws our way. Thank you for giving us the chance to provide you with a clear vision for our beautiful county. Please feel free to email any of the commissioners featured in this video by going to mymanatee.org vision. From our award-winning beaches to the expansion of our convention center, it's with your support that we'll continue to make Manatee County the premier place to live, work, and play.
in Manchee County. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. I'd like to call to order the Board of County Commissioners meeting, regularly scheduled meeting for Tuesday, January 23rd. Um, what we have this morning is that Commissioner Van Ossenbridge is not here, but he is on Zoom. Commissioner, are you there? Well, I guess you'll be joining us shortly. Um, Hold on, quick. What we do is that every before every one of our meetings, we worship our God and we pledge to our great nation. Today, saying our pledge, our, our invocation will be Pastor Reverend or Reverend Sam Rayner from West, ba West Braden and Baptist Church. Doing our pledge this morning is one of our very own. Uh, Norm Hagel, Master Sergeant, we call him Top in the Marine Corps, um, who served 20 years and uh, in the United States Marine Corps, URA. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about his service in the Marine Corps. Four Navy and Marine Corps uh, accommodation medals, three Navy and Marine Corps Navy, uh, achievement medals, the Army achievement medal, the Presidential Unit Citation, two Navy Unit Citations, two Navy Meritorious Unit Citations, six Good Medal, con uh, Good Conduct Medals. That's something an officer can't have, only enlisted can. Um, National Defense Service Medal, Kosovo Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal with a star, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Korean Defense Service Medal, eight Sea Service Deployment Ribbons, Navy and Service, Navy and Marine Corps Overseas Service Ribbon, Marine Corps Drill Instructor Ribbon. That's why Commissioner Beard and I are so crazy from because of guys like him. Uh, NATO Medal. Uh, for Afghanistan, NATO Medal for Kosovo, eight cert certificates of commendation, two certificates of appreciation, and three meritorious masks. As I said, that the um, top Hagel was, or Master Sergeant Hagel, was a Marine Corps drill instructor. He served in Kosovo, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and he also uh, was in security operations in Guantanamo Bay and South Korea. Today, He's our Public Works Fleet Operations Chief and has been uh, and that and has been since 1919 has been awarded two Fleet Master Sir, Master Awards for Association of Equipment Management Professionals, ranked in the top 50 leading fleet through the American Public Works Association, and recognized as 100 best fleets uh, from the National Association of Fleet Managers. Sir, thank you very much for everything that you've done for us. We appreciate it. Now, if you can stand, we would stand for the pledge and for the invocation. Thank you. We'd like to do, right after the invocation, if we could have, we'd like to do a moment of silence for our two warrior heroes that were uh, Navy SEALs that were lost last week at sea. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of living in this wonderful community. We thank you for the privilege of serving the people here. And we thank you for the responsibility that you have given us to care for those around us. Lord, I pray for wisdom for the Board of County Commissioners. I pray for a good day. Lord, I ask that you bless this time. It's in your son's name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you. If we could just have a moment of silence for our Navy SEALs. Thank you very much. Matt Sergeant. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your, our, your service to our community and to our nation. Thank you very much. And, Top, thank you for all the stuff you do at Public Works. Thank you, sir. County Administrator, are there any um, announcements or updates to the agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair, all the updates have been added to the update memo. All right, thank you very much. Is there any items that a commissioner would like to, to remove from consent? All right, thank you. Commissioner Ron, I, I just want to make sure you can hear me. I tried to speak earlier and I didn't get a reaction. Yeah, I can are hear you. Able sir. To hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What we'll do at this point is that we also have a Port Authority meeting this morning. And I will uh, adjourn this meeting and turn the meeting over to Commissioner Bearden, who is stepping in as chair of the port. 
Welcome to the Manatee County Port Authority meeting on January 23rd, 2024. At this time, I would like to open it up for public comments. Do we have any public comments at this time? If you would, please come up to the podium, state your name, county of residence. You have three minutes. I'll keep it brief, Glenn Jibblin, for the record. So I went out to the port about a couple months ago um, as an invitation. Renewable energy, you've got hundreds of thousands of square feet out there, and we're still not moving in that direction. They've got ports all over the country that have renewable energy. So I don't know what the big problem is. We did have your executive come to the Patriot meeting and explain all the functions of the port, and they do a great job. So when I asked them about the renewable, they said, we don't have the funds. I don't know about you guys, but when you're getting 20% back on your money or more, that's a pretty good investment. Had you listened to me 10 years ago, the system would have been paid for, generating tens of thousands of dollars, and would have lasted another 20 years. So hopefully you can start moving in the right direction on renewable. You've got great rooftops out there, plenty of space. You're bringing in more refrigeration units, more containers, more power consumption. And that fallacy, oh, the FPLs is, is have solar farms. Those, that energy from the panels never make it 20 miles in to the port. Never happens. They can't take care of the 60,000 houses it generates now. So please, reconsider that and move forward with a renewable component out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll move to the next item. Uh, cassette agenda. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, exactly uh, reiterate what you're saying. We only have a very brief agenda. It's all on consent, followed by any commissioner comments. And then uh, I don't have any comments as far as the board director, executive director comments. So um, I would uh, request consideration of the consent agenda. Okay. Do we have any items uh, by any Port Authority members that need to be pulled at this time? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm entertaining motions on the floor to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Sorry. All right. So we have a, a motion by Port Authority member Commissioner Satcher, a second by Port Authority member Amanda Ballard. Um, we will now go to a vote. District three votes yes. It's up. Everybody's up. Yep. Okay. That vote passes, clerk, with a vote of 7-0. Moving on to the next item, which would be commissioner comments. Do we have any comments at this time? <clears throat> or, none. Uh, I have this little flyer here from Seaport Manatee by the numbers, and uh, this just shows us the amazing work that the port has been doing 5.13 billion in annual economic impact, which is amazing, supporting 37,000 direct and indirect jobs, over $200 million generated uh, in the state and local taxes. And this is not supported by no, it's no ad valorem, so no tax support. So keep doing the great job that you're doing, Carlos. Um, it's a blessing to be a part of this port. Um, and that's it for today. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. And we're back. Um, next coming up is uh, one of the, a lot of, this is a fun thing to do. This is part of what we get to do is the awards presentations and proclamations. So what we'd like to do now is a pr presentation of a uh, 2023 Employee of the Year and adoption of the proclamation designating, designating Paul Planet Day. And coming up, Ch Charlie H., Thank you, sir. Thank you, members of the board, County Administrator Bishop, County Attorney Clegg, uh, and staff uh, who are still sitting on their seats, and I asked them to stand up and get me by. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Wow, who's running natural resources today? <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul, please. County commissioners have adopted this resolution and this and this pro, excuse me adopted this proclamation for you today, and I wanted to read this to the record. 
um, for all manner. And um, I expect to see this framed in your office, in your continued employment tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So let me start by saying proclamation of the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida. Whereas the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida have expressed and acknowledged their appreciation for the dedicated efforts of county employees through the programs such as the Employee of the Month program. And whereas the Board of County Commissioners wishes to further acknowledge and recognize the outstanding and superior efforts and contributions of county employees through the designation of an Employee of the Year, selected from among those persons honored as Employees of the Month during that calendar year. And whereas Paul Panic has been employed by the county since January 19, 1988, youngster, <laughs> and is currently the Environmental Programs Manager with the Groundwater Section of the Natural Resources Department and has been selected as Employee of the Year for 2023 due to the many and varied contributions he has made to Manatee County government. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by this Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that January 23rd, 2024, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Paul Panic Day. In Manatee County, in acknowledgement of his selection as Employee of the Year and his dedication to providing the most responsive and efficient services to Manatee County government specifically and to the citizens of our community in general. Adopted with this quorum present and voting this 23rd day of January 24, signed by Michael Ron, chairperson of the Manatee County Board of County Commissioners. Paul, congratulations. You. you know, there are, there are many people who um, stand with Paul for this honor. And I'm sure Paul has something to say uh, with you and your beautiful family who are able to attend here with you today. Um, I also wanted to ask Alyssa Powers if she might come up and make a few re recommendations and support for this honor and recognition. Alyssa? Good morning, commissioners. Um, County Administrator Bishop and uh, County Attorney Clegg. Sorry, let me move the mic. So it was my privilege to um, to nominate Paul for Employee of the Month, and I am just so excited for him to um, to be awarded this Employee of the Year. Having spent 15 plus years working beside him, uh, he is truly an asset to the county to the citizens and to the environment, and this is your day. Congratulations again. Thank you. All right, you may have the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I'm back. <laughs> and it's an honor to be here. And uh, I know you've heard a lot about me, and, um, and uh, the only thing else I want to emphasize is that I take great pleasure in helping other people succeed, and not just my staff, uh, but uh, management and a host of other people I interact with. And uh, my, my career and job are very important, but my family are more important. And I'm pleased to say that they took time out of their busy schedule to be here today. So I'd like, I'd like you uh, to meet each of them. First, uh, my oldest daughter, Rose, the redhead over here, she's, she's 30 years old. She's going to be married on Saturday. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. She works for a local uh, freight brokerage. She's their uh, uh, marketing and communications manager, and she's been there over three years, and she's a great asset to that company. And my middle daughter, uh, Gina, she's, uh, she's 26, married, lives in New Hampshire. And she has a bachelor's and master's degree in environmental engineering from the University of Florida, summa cum laude. And she works for an environmental consulting firm and has been there over three years. And my youngest daughter, Abby, she's 20. She still lives at home. <laughs> and uh, she's uh, getting a, a counseling degree from uh, Florida Gulf Coast University. And she's starting a master's degree in the summer 
and she's already diagnosed me with several ailments, <laughs> including uh, attention deficit, uh, anger management, and a few others. <laughs> and there you have three future Manatee County employees right there. <laughs> and most importantly, the love of my wi uh, life, my wife, Kathy. Uh, she, uh, we've been married, I need to get this right, uh, 35 years. Awesome. And um, she works for, she's a, she's a math professor, mathematics professor at uh, State College of Florida, formerly Manatee Community College. She's been there over 30 years. And they don't have an employee recognition program there. Uh, but if they did, she would have been employee of the year three times or more because <laughs> she's way more caring and conscientious than I am. <laughs> And uh, I'd also like to give special thanks to Alyssa Powers, who was just up here, our division manager. In the past two years, she has greatly changed the culture of our group, uh, built and rebuilt relationships, expanded programs, and hired some bright, upcoming professionals. It is a pleasure working for her. And Kelly Polanski, back here. She's our division assistant, and she's part of the employee recognition team. She and that group uh, put a lot of time and effort reviewing all the wonderful employee nominations. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you, the county commissioners, uh, county administrator, and uh, all the other wonderful people that I interact with in the county. Uh, I appreciate all that you do. And that's all I had to say. Paul, thank you very much for your service to Manatee County. I know that we've interacted a lot, and you're, I'll tell all the commissioners, Paul is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to environmental and especially environmental groundwater and things like that that we deal with here in Manatee County. Thanks for having your wonderful family here today. Um, I almost was going to think you'd give your wife's age, but then I know you wouldn't be able to play much longer because <laughs> um, she would have taken you out. Um, but thank you for all the hard work you do. We really appreciate everything you do, your just everything you add to the team at Natural Resources. And thank you for just being here today and being part of us, being part of our family. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And congratulations on both your award and the, uh, the proclamation today. Thank you, sir. Anybody else like to say anything? Uh, I, I will. Mr. Pedick, thank you so much uh, for, for everything you do for the county. And I, I think that uh, the way that you spoke up here today, uh, it seems to speak volumes about your personality and, and the kind of person that you are. Um, you know, and instead of talking about your experiences and, and why you became Employee of the Year, uh, you instead took the time to recognize uh, the other people in your life who, uh, who, who helped you along and to help, helped you to get there. So I, I think that that kind of um, self, um, what is it, whatever the opposite of self-aggrandizement is, <laughs> um, that it, it, thank you, that, that really speaks volumes about the kind of person that you are, and uh, we really appreciate having you at the county. Thank you. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have a motion on this item. Yeah, there is, there's a motion up. Yeah, there's no need for public comment on it. It's a Yes, sir. The, uh, let me get there. What did that do over here? There is a motion by made by Commissioner Cruz and seconded by Commissioner Turner. All those, I would you'd all vote right now. And I'll get the, and I'll get it. Mr. Three votes aye. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. And believe it or not, the uh, motion carries seven to zero. <laughs> no, no, no disdaining votes. So congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul, it's, it's our honor from Manatee County to you to present 2023 Employee of the Year. I'll read the plaque in recognition of your outstanding service and dedication to Manatee County and citizens by the Board of County Commissioners on this date, January 23rd, 2024. Once again, congratulations. And there you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Now go back to work. Um, <laughs>
Thank you all. Thank you, Natural Resources, for you all being here today and uh, celebrating with Paul. Next up is we have an, another great event. It's our presentation of the January Employee of the Month. So, Joe Lynn, if you come forward. And, and so nobody was at natural resources. Nobody's at public works. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, no. uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, uh, Mr. County Administrator, and Mr. County Attorney. I'm Jim Rutterberg. I'm the Interim Utilities Director and the Chief Utilities Engineer. I am pleased to be before you this morning to introduce to you Joe Lynn Schmidtgen uh, as the January Employee of the Month. Joe Lynn currently works in our wastewater group as our maintenance data coordinator. She's a dedicated and hardworking employee who consistently and quietly goes above and beyond to deliver exceptional results. Her commitment to her work is unwavering and she consistently strives to exceed expectations. Not only does Jo Lind excel in her day-to-day -day tasks, but she is also reliable and supportive team member, always willing to lend a helping hand to her colleagues. She has shown great determination in overcoming challenges and finding innovative solutions to problems, which has greatly contributed to the overall success of our team. One example is the, <clears throat> is the lift station emergency response guide that she helped create. Jolyn's attention to detail and ability, and ability to think critically allowed her to an anticipate potential challenges and develop a guide that would be beneficial and easy to use from staff in the EOC to the field. This recently created guide was used during Hurricane Adalia which allowed staff to respond swiftly and effectively, minimizing a potential damages and risk when a list station is not functioning. Whether everyone knows this or not, you definitely want your list station functioning properly, and JoLynn is the anchor to achieving this. I'll now invite Kevin Morse, our deputy director, out, followed by her immediate supervisor, Eric Gibson, for a few words. Let me hand these to you now. So uh, uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, Kevin Morris with the Wastewater Division. Uh, and uh, Joe Lynn is just one of so many uh, dedicated, humble, hardworking public servants in our department. And it just means a lot to us that you've chosen to recognize her today. So we really appreciate that. And I wish Dr. Panic was still here. I wanted to share some numbers with you to kind of put things in perspective. So Manatee County has about 130,000 sewer accounts. And if at each one of those homes, we had two and a half people, and the average person flushes six times a day. Um, as we get older, we flush more. Uh, but that's two million flushes a day, two million times a day that your toilet flushes, and that water has to get from your home to the wastewater plant. A lot of things have to go right as it makes its, its, its uh, journey. And so the lift stations are very, very important. We've got a, a very complex system, 750 lift stations, over 2,000 pumps, um, almost 10,000 level sensors and instruments out there in that system. And so uh, there's a lot of problems that can occur. And you know, problems though don't become trouble um, if you handle them the right way. And so, so as uh, Jim pointed out, Jo Lynn stands between problems becoming trouble. She helps us to understand, you know, exactly what kind of signals are coming in. And uh, the crews that you see behind us here, every day they're in dozens of these lift stations. They are, they're airing them out so that they're safe to go down into. They're doing preventative maintenance. They're, they're um, pulling the rags out of the pumps, uh, things that people flush that they shouldn't flush. Uh, it's hard work, really hard work. And as a part of that process, they're triggering these alarms as they go through the system. And it's Jo Lynn's job, one of her jobs, one of her many jobs, is to discern which are the real alarms and which are the, the false alarms. Because we don't want our trouble crews going out there and, uh, and, and wasting valuable time addressing false alarms. So, uh, so, so anyway, that's just one aspect of what Jo Lynn does. Uh, and uh, I'm going to turn it over now to, to Eric Gibson, her uh, direct supervisor, to talk a little bit more about her journey through the utility department and uh, why she's so deserving. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking this day to recognize her. Ms. Jolyn's been here since uh, May of 2018. She's started as a fiscal tech move through administrative first, I'm sorry, then to fiscal. She's now our maintenance data coordinator. She is a key player in the operations internal of what's going on in our office. 
like Mr. Morris mentioned, we have several hundred alarms that come through every day. Some of them are initiated by the crews. Some of them are actual alarms. Uh, she dispatches crews. She heads up our corrosion and odor control program on recording all the data that we review every month. Uh, she has definitely proven to be a asset to utilities and lift stations. And I'm happy to see her in this position today. Uh, thank you all for taking this time. Joe Lynn, <clears throat> we are very proud to award you the January Employee of the Month for Manatee County. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the honor of Employee of the Month. And thank you. You guys really surprised me on Friday. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> so thank you. It means a lot. Jolene, I can't thank you enough for the hard work you and your the team does at public works I mean we do appreciate all the hard work you guys do so our toilets flush every day um, we uh, did surprise you on Friday and it was a tough day for you but to let you know that still your, your county family cares and our prayers are with you still and um, congratulations on an employee of the month now you're in the running for employee of the year isn't that cool so yeah. so but but thanks God thanks to the public works team thanks for everything you guys do Citizens of Antique County, thank you. We thank you for, for all that you do for, for us and, and all the hard work that you do here in Mantee County. So thank you, team. Thank you guys very much. And all right, let me go back to work. <laughs> all right, next was a presentation on water quality update, but I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna take some uh, chair privilege and move that to after presentations. So our, we, um, what we'll need is a motion to adopt all our presentations. Proclamation, sorry, proclamations. Motion to approve. Second. second. All right, a motion from Commissioner Cruz, a second from <coughs> Commissioner Bearden. All those in favor? Aye. 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 KVO? I'm sure you voted. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. District 3 is a yes. Yes, sir, thank you. And the motion carries 7-0. First up is our adoption and presentation of a proclamation designing February, the month of February 2024, as Black History Month, and Commissioner Cruz is going to present that this morning. They're scared to come with me. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> All right, whereas Black History Month dates back to 1926 and observes African American achievements, and whereas Black History Month celebrates the achievements and contributions of African Americans in the United States, and whereas Black History Month's intent is not only to increase the knowledge of black history in black communities, but also to spread the issue to American society as a whole. Whereas all members of the nation are affected by black history because it is part of American history, which should be celebrated by everyone. Whereas Black History Month has become a symbolic time period in which the appreciation and celebration of African Americans begins every year and continues all year. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that February 2024 shall be known, designated, and set aside as Black History Month in Manatee County, Florida, and the board further calls upon the people of Manatee County to recognize this special observance with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Adopted with a quorum present and voted this 23rd day of January 2024, signed by our chairperson, Mike Ron, and attested by the clerk of the court, Angel Coloniso. We had some members of the NAACP here to uh, have a moment to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and congratulations. I got one more member. Keith, you want to come on up too? I got one more member. He didn't, he's not, he's shy. 
my wife's shy. Everybody's shy. When it comes to the NAACP, everybody's shy because we cause so much trouble in some things. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you and good morning. Hello, my name is Luther Wilkins. Yes, yes. Good morning, uh, county commissioners, esteemed members of the Manatee County government, <clears throat> and guests. I am honored to stand before you today as the president of the Manatee County NAACP branch to express my heartfelt gratitude for this proclamation celebrating black history for the month of February. <clears throat> As an organization dedicated to the promotion, equality, and justice for all individuals, we are thrilled to see our local government recognize this importance of acknowledging the contributions of achievements of African Americans throughout history. This proclamation serves as a vital reminder of the struggles and triumphs of the civil rights movement and the ongoing fight for racial equality in our society. We appreciate the commitment of the Manatee County government fostering a culture of inclusivity and respect for all individuals, regardless of the race or ethnicity. By working together toward this common goal, we can create a brighter future where everyone has access to equality and resources. On behalf of the Manatee County NWC, NAACP branch and the citizens we serve, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to those who have worked tirelessly to make this proclamation possible. Your dedication to promoting awareness and understanding of Black History Month has not gone unnoticed. And we are grateful for the efforts in advancing the cause of social justice. So let us come together to commemorate this moment this momentous occasion with dignity, humanity, and deep commitment to the values of equality and justice. Together we can build a more peaceful union where everyone, every individual has, can live with dignity and reach their full potential. Next month, February the 17th, the Manatee County NAACP has a Freedom Fund banquet where we are uh, recognizing black history and we are recognizing seven citizens that have worked tirelessly over 40, 50, and some of them 40 and 50 years uh, serving our community. So I'm inviting you all to come out and enjoy this with us. Thank you. Thank you, County Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your words were spot on. And it's our privilege to be able to, to recognize this month as Black History Month. We appreciate all the hard work you do and the hard work you continue to do. Um, with that, uh, we have two commissioners on the board. Uh, Commissioner Ballard's up first. Luther and Rita, thank you guys so much for being here today, and uh, thank you for this important proclamation. I'm uh, excited for the Freedom Fund Banquet, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to attend. There was another uh, event that I, that I wanted to mention. Um, there's an education luncheon um, on February the 10th at SCF. Um, that is that talks about our local uh, black history. So it's the education legacy of Lincoln Memorial High School. So um, I think that as we, you know, celebrate and commemorate Black History Month, learning about uh, our, our local black history is, is one of the, the most important things. So I'm excited to attend that luncheon as well. Yes. And uh, I thank you guys so much for everything that you do. Okay, thank you. Mr. Satcher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, really appreciate you being here and uh, the work that you do. So to take a commissioner's privilege for just a moment. So yesterday evening, or last night, everything aligned, and all my little kids, at least, went to bed a little bit early. And, um, and so I got to watch a little bit of television. I watched a man named David Barton. And he was talking about the history of the American Revolution and just U.S. history in general. And I learned two different things um, that I didn't know. Number one was that the first time the Continental Congress met, they spent two hours, it might have even been four, but I'm going to go with two. We'll go low, at least two hours in prayer, um, praying before they had their first meeting. Um, and so, you know, this was a nation that was birthed in prayer. Um, so I, I took that to heart. And the other story that he told um, and went through the facts and how it came about and was the story of James Armistead. 
Um, and James Armistead actually went, um, you know, pretended to be on the British side and, um, and was there with General Cornwallis and found out ahead of time that they were going to Yorktown. Um, and so got word back to the, the, our armies um, that they were headed to Yorktown so we could get there first and so that they could keep the ships from landing. And, um, and it was just so interesting to learn that because, and James Armistead was a man with much, with more melanin than me, right. you know, and, uh, cause I'm one of those people, I, I just believe, you know, we're all God's children, all from Adam and Eve and, uh, my blood's red and, and everyone's blood red, but how much melanin I have in my skin can be different. And, uh, he had extra melanin in his skin compared to me, um, and we won that battle and won that war and birthed the nation, um, and he played a significant part of it. And so uh, when we mentioned, you know, Black History Month this morning, and I'd just seen that last night, I thought uh, just an interesting story to me and worth looking into. So, but thank you so much for being here and all the great work that y'all do. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank we appreciate you. you. That's it, right? All right. Up next is a adoption and presentation of proclamation designating January 9th through February 3rd, 2024 as Gulf Coast Games for Life in Manchee County. And I think that uh, Commissioner Turner and I are now of age where we can participate in those games, so I think we might have to. We may be getting past it, <laughs> especially when it comes to pickleball. Pickleball is part of it, right? <laughs> Savage game. All right. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a procl proclamation for Gulf Coast Games for Life. So whereas Gulf Coast Games for Life serves over 500 senior athletes, providing a vehicle for senior athletes to participate in an Olympic-style sporting competition each year. And I think pickleball is going to be included. Uh, whereas... The Manatee County Sports and Leisure Services Department is in partnership with Sarasota County Parks, Recreation and National Resources Department, and the City of Northport Parks and Recreation, promotes a celebration of sportsmanship, camaraderie, and friendly competition. And whereas the Manatee County Sports and Leisure Services Department in partnership with Sarasota County Parks, Recreation and National Resources, and the City of Northport Parks and Recreation promotes healthy aging through sport. And whereas the Gulf Coast Games for Life is celebrating its 35th anniversary this year in providing fun, fitness, and fellowship for a generation of champions. Now, therefore, it will be proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that January 9th, through February 3rd, 2024, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Gulf Coast Games for Life Month in Manatee County, Florida, to acknowledge and honor the senior population for its achievements and inspiration during this annual event. Adopted with a quorum present and voting this 23rd day of January 24th, signed by Mike Ron, chairperson, and attested by Angelina Coloniso, clerk of the circuit court. Thank you. Who likes, who's stepping up? You? Hi. Excellent. That's yours. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Mr. Clegg, Mr. Bishop. My name is Allison Minardi, and I work with the Sports and Leisure Department. And I just want to give a little bit more insight into the games. It's not just athletic events. It's really an opportunity for this population to participate in activity, to feel connected to a community larger than they feel, and feel that they have a place to share their passion for recreation, which is the heart of what we do here at Sports and Leisure. Um, Manatee County has been a part of this game, of the game since its inception in 1989. And then we started to join and partner with Sarasota and Northport to expand the reach and offer more events all along the Gulf Coast. I do have some of the staff here with me today that helped organize and facilitate some of the things that happened right here in Manatee County. So here today I do have Marcus Francis, he's our recreation manager, and he helped facilitate and organize all of the track and field events that happened at St. Stephen's just last weekend. It was very cold, but still a success. 
Um, we also have Paige Eddins here. She um, helped us coordinate the bowling component, and it will happen next week at Bowl Marlanes. Not present, but also worth noting, um, Dave Shermer helped co um, coordinate the golf that happened at Terra Golf uh, just last week as well. And then we also had uh, Michelle Richardson and Jay Jardon. They helped orchestrate and facilitate the very popular pickleball events that happened right here at GT Bray Walton Center. Just as a side note to give you the scope of that, of all the registrations that happened across the entire Gulf Coast, roughly half of them were to participate in the pickleball events that we had. <laughs> so it was really wildly popular. Uh, we were really thrilled to be able to um, host it right here in Manatee County. Um, we also pulled just a couple of statistics and demographics just to share, just to show you the scope and the range. So we, we pulled the oldest participants from male and female. The oldest male participant this year was 91 at the time, and he participated in golf just last week. Oldest female, 97. 97, and she will be participating in three different events at the Sarasota Aquatic Center for swimming. Also, we had a mega athlete here in Bradenton who registered for 10 different events. That's one of the most that we saw registrations for. And we also had a father-son team golf do the golf uh, event last week. Son was 50, father 78. So you can see how this event just brings family together, brings community together. And we are just so honored for the commission to recognize the importance of these games and highlight the athletes that participate in them. So thank you very much. What is the, what is the bottom range? 50. <laughs> Dangerously close. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh, Sports and Leisure, thank you guys so much for continuing this, uh, these events. It's so important. And thank you for bringing Sarasota and Northport into it. Um, I look forward to next year. Well, I might participate in the golfing event, but um, it'll be. A, thank you guys for the work, you hard work you guys do, and continue and continue to do. So, thank you very much, and congratulations on the proclamation. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next year. Absolutely, you're 36. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to our present our presentation that was scheduled. It's the water quality update, and who is leading? that. Good morning again, Charlie. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, County Ministry of Bishop, County Attorney Clegg. Thank you for this moment of time on your busy agenda. For us, us, the Natural Resources Department and our cooperating departments of utilities and natural res and, and public works and all the other employees of Manatee County that work every day towards water quality improvements in Manatee County. Uh, we have a PowerPoint here that I'd like to run through a little briefly, but we're, we're going to cover three topics here, expanding our existing successes that we have in Manatee County, supporting our partner organizations such as Keep Manatee Beautiful, and we're going to be planning for the future here and a little discussion about that in a minute. First of all, though, I, next slide, I hope, is that button there, and it's not. Um, next slide. Next slide. There we go. Fine. <laughs> the next slide is a, a little presentation of those key and senior managers, not the entire department of 14 staff, but the senior managers that work every day towards this specific task of ensuring water quality is water is monitored, even our, our air programs as well. I don't want to uh, lessen that, for instance, but our water issues are very important in Manatee County from the source of drinking water to supporting our, our wonderful wildlife that is here. And these individuals work very hard to ensure not only are we watching these our improvements to take place, but we are meeting our regulatory requirements with the federal government and the state of Florida. We have a water quality track record that's that's right on right with it and compared to other counties around here. I'm very proud to be part of that program. We have wastewater facility improvements, water quality monitoring, fertilizer ordinance I want to explain, and certificates and education programs through our wonderful extension program that I'll highlight here in just a few minutes. But first of all, in addition to that, um, stormwater quality improvements, watershed protection overlay districts that were passed in the 80s and 90s to protect the drinking water quality of Lake Manatee and Everest Reservoir. 
and of course our environmental lands program which has just taken off this this last year after citizens voted to support that referendum to acquire those properties take a moment here this slide is an effort to just identify what it takes to measure water quality in Manatee County this is almost 80 stations where sampling is done on a monthly or bi-monthly basis uh, despite the weather it's like the postal service come high, rain or snow sleet or say or, or hail we're here out there in the water and uh, that that results in over 11,000 different samples being taken and looked at so you can be assured and the residents can be assured that Manatee County is working hard to make this happen and to always observe where we are in our water quality picture it's these statistics that are provided to our Tampa Bay Estuary program partners allowing them to effectively and widely promote uh, the advances of water quality throughout Manatee County they take that data from Manatee County and its staff I want to spend a little bit more time on this slide in that in addition to that water quality monitoring program we do in fact work on all areas of activity our extension program for instance works each day with some of our residents and commercial operators to ensure that we're using water efficiently and that water doesn't run off through a lawn and and deliver whatever contaminants that might be there to the curb and gutter to the stormwater system and eventually to Manatee County they save over 18 million they have saved over 18 million gallons of water last year alone in water irrigation efficiencies also want to talk a little bit about the seagrasses that have been that are responsible and responding to our water quality efforts 1400 1400 acres of seagrass 114,000 acres of seagrass it's larger than the sea limits of Bradenton that lie just offshore in Sarasota Bay and in the Gulf of Mexico that depend upon the water quality that we provide we have storm event sampling for bacteria uh, last year and the years before we were faced with possible closures of our recreational beaches along the Gulf because of bacte bacteriological readings that were taken around Palmasola Bay and assumptions made by the health department that 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 contamination extended throughout the entire county we were able to respond and, and keep our beaches open to prove and demonstrate with our own sampling efforts that bacteria that is related to fecal coliforms uh, animal waste products and other things we're not affecting the Gulf beaches of Anna Maria Island there are many stormwater projects that we're going to be pursuing also that take a huge investment and plan plan ahead for, for the activities in some of our important basins like Pierce Canal and Bullies Creek and uh, Mill Creek up there by the by Lake Manatee and also um, this department this division is on the ready 24 7 for emergency response sampling in case of oil spills uh, overturned gas trucks uh, Piney Point is a good example where staff from this division and this department were there along with the county administrator I remember out there doing the sampling doing the observations and being very careful to, to actually document where the damages were occurring and steps needed to reverse that and clean that up one of the things that uh, we have gotten implemented as a community is a recognition that fertilizer when applied inappropriately to a lawn or especially during the summer season where almost daily rains are working through our lawns and our grasses to deliver whatever we place on it back out to the storm gutters back out to our streams and back out to the reservoir this is a very proactive program that we've implemented since 2011 and we find that the, the program is helping us to support our regulatory requirements as well we have to demonstrate to the federal government that we are monitoring and observing and correcting water quality problems and that's accomplished only through a close and careful daily observation the federal water quality permits that we hold and the Tampa Bay management consortium process are proactive programs to keep Manatee County in compliance the total maximum daily load requirements and basin management plans are regulatory requirements that come after a violation has been de determined it's our effort to keep us above that line TMDLs as the abbreviation holds and basin management plans those are below the line 
you haven't made your you haven't made your your goal when you're in those programs. We want to keep Magda County above the line at all times. The fertilizer ordinance, as you know, uh, has been implemented. We restricts those applications through June through September. It is not a fertilizer ban. There are still operations in agriculture, golf courses, our athletic fields at GT Bray and on all around the county, vegetable gardens. You can continue to use your fertilizers there. But we're focusing mostly on residential lawns and the commercial applicators that, that use them. And we do that, with again, with daily monitoring. But we have found that, again, um, with these restrictions, the public has not generally has been a good response. We had very few enforcements, very few uh, comments of, of not doing the right thing. And in fact, the industry has responded too. Uh, knowing that uh, summer fertilizer restrictions are in place along Southwest Florida and many other locations, the industry has responded by developing a summer blend. I don't know if you, I'm from Wisconsin and Lion Kugel beer is up there and you got the summer shanty blend. I don't know if you've ever had it from down here, but you talk about a summer blend and fertilizer, they're doing the same thing to allow us to still you know, keep our lawns healthy and green, but not load it up with the nitrogen that's so harmful. And finally, um, the fertilizer ordinance, as I mentioned, is possible with the cooperation of our partners, like the Estuary programs, the Keep Manatee Beautiful, and for certainly our individuals, because it starts at the home. And the Be Florida Friendly campaign is a campaign that came through the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council and the Tampa Bay Estuary program. The IFAS program for our local extension is there with continuous education. We have, uh, we have a flyers that we put out each, each, each year in, in the bills that we place to let people know why and, and how it says it's the law, but it's also an education program and a very high degree of cooperation there. It really takes a village to make this happen and we're seeing that happen in Manti County. This next slide is kind of like, well, you say that's happening, but where's your data? What's your facts? And again, uh, this, this is a, a trend. A number of samples that have been taken from, I believe it's from 20, I'm going to say 2007 through 2011 when we implemented the ordinance and the years that followed. You can see gold to blue. Blue is when the ordinance is in effect. Gold was when the ordinance was not in effect. Now there's a decline. There's a trend. There's a reduction or a holding steady, despite think about the growth that's happened in Manatee County since 2011. And we're holding that line and keeping nitrogen down. Now, there are many, of, there are many causes to nitrogen releases. I mean, there may be a fleet of ducks right by your sampling point, and it spikes way up. But on average, across the county, this is evidence, I believe, that continued diligence with our fertilizer program is producing results. And here's a little bit bigger picture also in, in trying to describe, you know, getting beyond the numbers and getting beyond the science. We've tried to pr provide a, a bigger picture that lets people say, are we good or are we not good? And the blue arrows indicate there that our nitrogen levels are going down. And the red arrows indicate they're going up. We're not perfect in some locations. The size of the arrow is the magnitude of the change. And what I want to point out there is that in those blue arrow areas, those are existing developments that have been there before stormwater regulations really came to bear with our water management district. And you would think, well, that's where the most pollution is occurring. But why are the nitrogen levels going down in those pre-existing residential areas? I've got to say one of them is reasons of fertilizer ordinance. So here we are um, with results and outcomes. Again, that's made possible with many of our partners. I was going to have Jennifer Hoffman here with me, but apparently she's unable to make the meeting today, so I'm going to take a little bit more time on this particular slide to talk about our partnerships. Keep Manatee Beautiful, and there are other organizations as well. There's uh, the Explorer Scouts, the people who dive on our, our artificial reefs and, and clear them of debris, and the efforts of others. But Keep Manatee Beautiful has been a a cornerstone of public participation and volunteerism in Manatee County for decades. And in, so, in the last year alone, uh, some of these statistics relate to their most recent successes. The volunteers are 3,750 out there working our roadways. That's 17,000 hours, uh, almost more than a half a million dollars of equivalent value of labor 
that would otherwise be provided by Manatee County to keep our rights away clean. It's a huge, a huge input. Look at the trees and giveaway. The you know, trees bring oxygen. The thousands of trees that have been donated to Manatee County residents to keep Manatee Beautiful program, particularly close to my heart, a thousand sea oats planted along our coastlines to help build our, our dunes and secure the, the, the territory that is there. Cleanups, gardens during Earth Day. Look at the partnerships there. Bradenton Area Visitor Adventures Bureau, the Sarasota Baywatch, Suncoast Aqua Adventures, Tampa Bay Estuary Program, Palmetto High School, St. Stephen's High School. Uh, they, this is just a short list. It goes on and on and on. And look at the trash. Again, numbers mean and make a difference. 11,000 tons. That's probably close to th you know, a week of, of trash that comes to Manatee County at landfills every day or more. Recycling programs, keeping it out of the landfill, and also the perennial tire collection. They don't, they don't go away. They're here. Keep Manatee Beautiful is there for us as a partner and a supporter to keep our environment and our water quality clean. So let's look a little bit about where we've been to where we're planning to be. I want to be able to say that we're going to cover a little bit of wastewater improvements, stormwater improvements, natural systems, and finally, as uh, Reagan said, trust but verify. Testing, inspection, inspections, and verifications. Wastewater improvements, I think Jim is here, back there, to support me, chief engineer with the utility system. I provide these statistics. And since 20, excuse me, since 2017, improvements were made at the Southwest plant for treatment efficiencies, but they resulted, they resulted in nearly a 50% reduction in the level of nitrogen concentrations in the wastewater and in the reclaimed water product delivered to our residents. Like, storm, like uh, irrigation water, sometimes reclaimed water is used prolifically and there's a runoff, and that reclaimed water also makes it to the curb, to the streams, and to Sarasota Bay. And reducing nitrogen in our reclaimed water product is a way, a big way, to tackle the minimization of nitrogen to our environment. Improvements to the Southwest plant did exactly that. And I might add, that was not done under a regulatory requirement or so-called consent decree by the Department of Environmental Protection. That was a program that this board put in place, funded, and implemented because it was the right thing to do and involved you know, a, a reduction of ammonia and other products in our wastewater. And it happened and it worked. Now let's take a look at what's planned from 24 to 28. Inflow and infiltration into our pipes. That's a direct route for raw sewage to enter into the environment. Sealing those pipes, those older and aged pipes, is very, very important. $125 million have been set aside for that effort. And also, let's not stop there at the Southwest plant. Let's continue to make those efficiency improvements. And in your CIP, there's over excuse me, $496 million committed between 24 and 28. Commissioners, this is $600 million in investments you are making for water quality improvements in Manatee County in utilities alone. Don't let anyone ever say that Manatee County is asleep at the switch, not planning for the future, or not working hard with huge investments to make our water quality true. Can't believe I just did that. So, what does that what does that mean? <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, stormwater improvements. Let me emphasize there also that when we're working out in the in the in the field with Public Works Department, controlling and lowering the level of flooding, what I call the misery index, the frequency and severity of flooding, we have the opportunity also to co-locate water quality improvements with that work. And we have found this works every time. We're working through master plans that you have funded, along with the Water Management District's participation from Mill Creek, Gap Creek, Pier Strain, and the Bullies Creek. Again, in those urbanizing areas of watersheds where former you know, stormwater holdbacks are not in place, a lot of re retention ponds are not put in place because all those subdivisions were built prior to those regulations. And we're, we're now going back 
retroactively and fixing that with our flood protection programs. And we install automated structures at, at, the, at the drains to skim off the floatab floatable pollutants and also let the water still and let the natural plants take that up. That's what we're doing in many of these locations. And finally, the low-hanging fruit. Uh, you, know, you keep your house clean by, street, by vacuuming your carpets and sweeping your tile floors. <laughs> Here, street sweeping is a, is a banner of our operation. And this year, we're deciding to double the frequency of that, storm, of that street sweeping. That is going to make a huge difference before, as a proactive step, to keep the pollutants out of the water in the first place. Let me talk a little bit about natural systems that combine with that. Conservation land acquisitions, as you are now supporting, are an effort to not only you know, protect and promote habitat and restoring balance, but in a way, they're preemptive as well. Many of, the many of the properties we are acquiring would, would have otherwise supported additional housing. Now, we need housing in Manatee County, but sometimes when it's there on the waterfront or there on a, a sensitive environment, sometimes an acquisition program to, to protect the habitat also preempts the construction of homes that would introduce more pollutants in that location. This is a strategy that's used by all the governments in Florida, especially those in Southwest Florida, again, to minimize nitrogen. And it's recognized by the Tampa Bay Nitrogen Consortium as an effective tool to keep the pollutants out of the water. Habitat restoration is very important as well um, because it, it allows Mother Nature to slow down that rainwater, let it soak into the land, and provide the treatment. I won't say any more about habitat. There was, a, there was a video just this week shown out at Duet, <laughs> the habitat to support our apex predator, the panther. And Commissioner Van Osterbridge and, and Ranger Jerry, Jerry Miller were there to talk about the value of natural systems and habitats to protect not only our living resources, but our plants and all the plants that help protect water quality. Manatee River oyster restoration. I'm going to ask. Oh, I didn't bring it. I'm gonna, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, you know, uh, vertical oyster gardens. You ever wonder what that is? Well, this is it. Um, suspended by a stainless steel wire that will not degrade in the environment. And this provides habitat for living oysters to attach to it. If you've ever been around the water around red mangroves, every one of those drop-down prop roots are filled with oysters. I think we got the inspiration from that. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. But this is the kind of thing, oysters just like this in the Manatee River are working 24-7. They don't take weekends off. And they're there to remove the nitrogen producing and the chlorophylls and all the algae that, that covers our water sometimes in the summertime. Living oysters in the Manatee River and the Braden River where we see them growing, are being, more of them are being reintroduced to do more and more. More is definitely better in that circumstance. Seawall conversions to living shorelines, our example, our, our showcase will be at the Palmasola uh, Yacht Basin in, Braden, in Manatee County on Palmasola Bay, where a failing seawall there will be replaced with a sloped shoreline of vegetation that allows the water as it, to rise up against that shoreline and not erode soil into the, into the, back into the bay and give plants a chance, again, to touch the water and remove the pollutants with their root systems, et cetera. Finally, a stream, stream restoration uh, in GT Bray is one example of the many locations we could do with our channelized streams. They're built to move flood water, and they still will. But when we in introduce a few curves and angles to that stream, like on a, on a major scale is happening in the Kissimmee River throughout central Florida, we have the opportunity in a microcosm to do that here in Manatee County. Because there's water that flows to those streams every single day. It's called base flow. It comes from the groundwater. It also moves and moves out to the bay. And if we can instill that and slow that water down, the everyday flow, not the flood water, but the everyday flow, we will achieve more and more water quality improvement. Restoration projects benefiting the bay, here again are the numbers. The famous preserves that we have, Emerson Point, Robinson, Duet, GT Bray Park, Bennett Park, Hidden Harbor, and more that we'll be doing today, tomorrow, and next year, and years into the future. Again, what is Mandy County doing to protect its water quality? It's right here on that slide. 5,000 seagrass plugs, 
25,000 trees planted just this year alone throughout Manatee County by Parks, uh, Parks Maintenance Group and our Natural Resources Department. 15,000 acres of habitat restored. 1,500 of these <laughs> dropped in residential canals, off people's docks, all working for water quality effort. Back to you, the people who work for you and all of us in the water quality area. What do we want to do to maintain and continue to provide an aggressive water quality program for Manatee County? I mentioned we got 80 stations. Well, just by doubling it, going to 82 stations, by adding two automated samplers, we start improving the frequency of our sampling. We move from 11,000 samples to 13,000 samples. Again, monitoring, watching, detecting, and preventing upticks and increases by watching and monitoring. Five golf course maintenance inspection cycles at 40 golf courses in Manatee County. I want to pick that up. Just, we want to get there every three years, not every five years. And I'm not going to, I'm a golfer myself, a lifelong golfer. Golf courses are pledged to protect their environment, keep their sod hearth healthy, get a good game going, and, and work with the environment, not against it. But inspections and verification are always necessary. Meeting our growth needs, you can see there. We have some illicit discharges, emergency responses. We want to maintain that 24, 48 hour response. Because what are we growing at 10,000 or more people every year? So we've got a system and we're adding to it. And of course, as you know, your staff sometimes needs to be able to move with it. We want to expand our air and water quality monitoring programs. Bacteriological testing capabilities at the lab. Automated sampling requirements. Now there's three FTDs there proposed. It's something that our department will, will present to the county administrator and to the senior leadership team. And we'll work through the budget process of priorities. Everyone's asking for more staff. We recognize that. We'll find our way and we'll do the job we need to do with this support or, or, or other means. But I want to thank you. This, this results and closes our presentation with, I hope I've left a matter of assurance with you that the people behind me in our water quality and environmental protection division are working hard every day and with our utility partners and with our public works partners to protect water quality in Manatee County, in which I am proud to serve. So thank you. Thank you, Charlie. That was a great presentation. Um, question, is this, is this information available on our website under natural resources or? Well, after today it will be. All right, thank yes, you. Sir. So the public can go in there and pull it up and, yes, and see everything you presented today. Um, your guys' work is unbelievably important to the life of Manatee County. Um, natural resources, public works, utilities, Everybody does such a great job in ensuring that our, we have clean water here in Manti County. And I know that how hard everybody is working, believe me, we really do. And thank you for all the hard work the staff does, the teams do out there every day that are making sure that our water quality is the best that it can be here in Manti County for our citizens and future citizens. So thank you very much. I do have Commissioner Turner on the board. Well, you stole a lot of my thunder. Okay. <laughs> Charlie and team, uh, thank you very much. This this is really important, what you do, and it's a major concern of our residents, as we know. So putting together this presentation and informing everybody is, is really important. It, it will help things. So I'd just like to thank you for all you do on the daily, and thank you for this presentation. Thank you. Any other Mr. Chair, there's room on the board. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Charlie, I echo a lot of what the chair and what Commissioner Turner said, and I just hope that the, the board hears that the investments that the county is making uh, into the Natural Resources Department, uh, it's, it's bearing fruit, essentially. Um, and I think that's important to know because, you know, through LMAC, we're expanding natural resources by making significant purchases within the county of green, additional green space. And whether it's in East County over in Commissioner Satcher's district or if it's coastal wetlands in my district, 
you're seeing great successes from your team in managing both of those, uh, including water quality as well. And, and I think that's important because I hope the board will continue to invest in that in the county's natural resources. And that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. County Mr. Chair. Yeah, I uh, echo those thoughts. Charlie, a great presentation. Thank you. Well, um, it's done with your senior team, also the deputy ministers of yourself. Thank you for so much for your support. Yeah. Well, I just want to highlight some uh, other additions. Your budget of water quality is over $1.5 million that we dedicate so you can do these type things. The board's approved uh, more money for Keep Mantee Beautiful to do their outstanding work that they're doing. Uh, we've invested, as you mentioned, to the street sweeping. We've uh, worked with Public Works to double that output. So those little things are making a difference. It's seen every day. And I really appreciate the hard work, dedication to doing work that matters. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I add Thank you, guys. <laughs> Chair, hey, hey Chair. Charlie. Charlie, hey, Charlie, real quick, where can folks get that the oyster? Sure. Um, so, uh, Aiden Stockdale, uh, Education Volunteer Division Manager. So, these vertical oyster gardens um, are available through our partners with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. It's just a little form um, we make available for people to submit their name and contact information. They can pick one up from Robinson Preserve. So, this is available to anybody in our region. So, anybody can go online and fill out the form yep. and, and just, to get and then they'll the get vertical the information oyster. on how to pick up one of these. All right, thank you, All Commissioner right. Turner. Yeah, sorry. Um, Charlie, by no means am I an expert on this, but I think that the state of Florida struggles a lot more to protect our drinking water as well from contaminants. Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the northern states, from what I understand, they have a layer of clay and a huge layer of bedrock that we don't have here, yes. which then it doesn't stop the pollutants, but it stalls at decades. Is, well, is that the case? So we've got a, a much faster, we've got more risk to our aquifer quicker than the states up north. Is that a, correct? A little quick lesson in geology in yes. Florida here. Uh, through the first 200 feet of soil where a lot of our shallow wells are taken from, for drinking water for homes, it is vulnerable slightly. There is a clay layer about 18 feet below the ground that, that sits below our landfills right now that gives us a little level of protection. But more importantly, the geology of Florida here laid down by ancient seas gives us almost a 300 foot layer of dolomitic dolomite limestone that is 10 to the minus 6 in its porosity, about like this. And so when we, our drinking water wells are pulled from water from the Florida aquifer that sits well below that at depths of 900 to 1500 feet below the ground. And above it, like in the northern states, this 300 feet of dolomitic limestone sits as a cap and doesn't let water go up or go down. We've got artesian wells for that very purpose because water there at 1,000 feet has that cap above it and a lot of water going all the way back to central Florida pushing it out to the Gulf. It's under pressure. And when we pierce that dolomitic cap, water pushes up through the well. And we have flowing wells on the ground. That's because the geology of Florida around here is protective of that. As you know, on the other hand, Probably 40 to sometimes 60 percent of our drinking water supply comes from the surface, however. Lake Manatee are ri the rivers that, that feed that reservoir. And yes, that is vulnerable to contaminants. That does need to be protected. We've got, we have steward, we have families who have farmed that watershed for generations who are the first stewards, the first conservationists to protect that drinking water supply. A lot of attention is placed on agriculture. Oh, they've got too many fertilizers. They're letting it all run off. I'm here to defend uh, the practices of some of those agriculturalists because they know that they don't want to drop that, that level of fertilizer and let it run off and, and, and lose its productivity of growing crops and food. They've got to keep it on the land. So they're very judicious on how they apply that fertilizer. It's not like it used to be. And so um, it's important to protect our groundwater resources f as they support our shallow drinking water wells and all of our, our groundwater, our, our surface water supplies at Lake Manatee. But we can know that our deep groundwater, our deepest groundwater, is highly protected here throughout Florida in the Florida aquifer. That's good news. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you very much for everything. All right, we'll let them kind of leave the chamber. Up next, we'll have citizen comment. We'll let everybody kind of ch clear the chambers for a second. Citizen comment is for um, items that are future agen agenda items. Um, 
When you come forward, please state your name, county residence, and you'll have three minutes to speak. <clears throat> um, I have one speaker on, and that's Andrea. Good morning. Hey guys. I, I, welcome, Mike. Congratulations. I, I haven't seen you since then. So the, uh, my name's Andrea. Uh, Manatee County activist. Um, so I've got a few things I want to talk about. It's the normal stuff. My phones. I'd like the phones back on. When we all had the phones turned back on before, it was for more uh, participation from the residents. I can say that uh, it looks like we need more participation from the residents uh, for the county. So I think that at this point, going into 2024 elections, that it would be appropriate to turn the phones back on, find a some kind of system limiting the phones, but making them accessible to people like me uh, that are going to be working and going to be on a campaign trail at some point, you know, around the country. So um, I really like to participate in my own personal um, uh, community as well. And then, of course, I noticed our drinks are not allowed into the dais anymore. So I'd like some rules on that, too, because I think I'm an adult here. And if I need to sign something, I'll pay for the cleaning fee. But I could bring water. I bring water. I doubt it's going to hurt the floors that much, but I'm an adult. And I'd like to have some type of capped drinking option in here, uh, especially since we're here for hours. Um, the main issue I have that I'd like to bring here, and it might be something you guys can all help me with, it might not be. So I've just learned that we are now having our, our investigators for our children, our Department of Children and Family Services, which is a near and dear cause to my heart. And I'm hearing it's going away from our sheriffs and going into the department. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that here in the state of Florida, but like, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what bureaucrat, what politician up in, in, in Florida thought this was a good idea, but we have inspectors. These, these people are overworked and underpaid, first and foremost. That's the first problem right there. The second problem is, is because of that, they're now falsifying documents. So over the last three months, we have uh, Kristen Martinez. This is all from Florida. April Hawk and Trevor McKenzie, all in the department investigators, investigators with our Department of Children Family falsifying documents and being arrested. And those are the ones that they found. So that had to have been pretty egregious for those. Who's going to be doing the checks and balances for our kids? These are our children here in the state of Florida. I hope this, this county, you know, supports it being at the sheriff. The sheriff's department are our law enforcement. They are the only ones that should be investigating any type of crime in the state of Florida. That's my two cents. Don't spend it all at one day and one space. Take care. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good morning, sir. You know the... I think I know the routine. You need the routine. Is this thing on? For the record, Glenn Jibalina. You know, I just got back from Tahoe. So talk about tires and the waste. This was a four-day seminar about uh, autonomous housing. We build rammed earth homes out of tires. This guy's a rock star. We need no infrastructure. We need no lift stations. We need no electric lines. We need no sewer lines. I'm going back this summer. He's building 15,000 of these. Why can't we do this here? I don't get it. You talk about reclaim water. This guy does it all. And they only have seven inches of water a year, and they make it work. So I think uh, we should be moving in this direction. I still got some Tahoe's dirt that did get into a tire, but uh, the guy's a rock star. I think we need to be moving in a more sustainable direction uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, good, bad, and the ugly. Glenn Jablain in Manatee County. Transparency, I agree with Andrea. You know, we you're restricting us on our phone calls. You don't answer your emails. You don't, you don't communicate with the public. You're isolating us, and that's not your job. Your job is to communicate with us. <sighs> accountability, right? Honesty, accountability. Here's the problem I have. I did a records request 
We spent $485,000 on a report we're not going to use that by law you're required to use. And you don't. Please explain to the public why you wasted $485,000 of taxpayer money on a 171-page report that was outstanding. And by the way, you used this company last time, but suddenly they're not good enough this time. I don't get it. Uh, I, did do, I did do the records request. There it is. So that's what we have. Veterans, let's talk about accountability. We're still missing a million, a million four. Commissioner Ryan, you got a great, great project with $4 million to light up. Manatee, we can't find $4 for our homeless vets. I'm still appalled that there is no accountability where that money went and why we still have homeless veterans. You guys are masters of deflection instead of correction. You better start correcting your stuff. You better start getting our vets off the street. You better start moving in the right direction. Or this veteran issue, until Tunnels to Towers come, come here, is going to haunt you all the way to the voting booth. For the record, Glenn Gadfly sure. Gibellina. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward for public comment on future agenda items? With that, I have Commissioner Ballard's on the board. I did just want to speak briefly to Ms. Griffin's uh, comments about our, our child protective investigators and uh, those moving from the Sheriff's Department over to DCF. Um, Unfortunately, that was a decision that was made in Tallahassee. Uh, that was a law that was passed back in 2023, and the transition uh, was made in, I believe, the fall of, of this past year. Um, it's not a decision that I personally agreed with. Um, I worked with our child protective investigators here in Manatee County for many years uh, at the Sheriff's Department. They were second to none. They were, they were fantastic. Um, if, if there were ever a, um, and, and only seven of 67 counties in the, the state had their investigators through their sheriff's office versus DCF. So we were, uh, we were an outlier. I do believe that, that we were an outlier in a positive way. Uh, but unfortunately, um, that's not where we stand now. They made the decision at the state level to unify uh, those investigators under DCF. If there is ever a decision um, to, to move some of those investigators back out to the Sheriff's Department, I would, I would be fully in, in support of that decision. Thank you, Commissioner. Seeing no other, seeing no other citizens like to come forward for public comment on future agenda items, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Uh, the next up is a uh, citizen's comment on consent agenda items only. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and speak on the consent ag agenda items only? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. I'll look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion, to motion made by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Cruz. And we're waiting for it to come up. Mr. Chair, District 3 votes aye on consent. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll go ahead, and can I have a verbal vote on approval of consent agenda? Aye. And Chair says aye. All, um, motion carries 7 to 0. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move into presentations upon request. Um, the first one up is financial management on item 31. Anyone like a presentation on that item? Yes, sir. All right, um, would there be any in, in public comment on item 31? Yes. Huh? Public public comment. Yes, I am. Any public comment on item 31? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment and have a motion to approve item 31 under financial management. Motion has been approved by Commissioner Beard and seconded by Commissioner Satcher. If anyone can vote now. Mr. Chair, District 3 votes yes. Thank you, sir. And the motion carries 7 to 0. 
going to item property management item 32. Is there any public comment on item 32? Oh, sorry, but anybody like any pr presentation on item 32? No. All right, thank you. Is there any public comment regarding item 32? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. We do need to just state for the record that this is adoption of resolution R24019, okay. vacating portions of two separate easements located at 5129 19th. All right, thank you very much. Bradenton, Florida. Thank you for reading that into the record, Mr. Mr. County Attorney. Is there any public comment on item 32? Seeing none, I will close public comment and look for a motion to approve item 32. We have a motion made by Commissioner Ballard and seconded by Commissioner Satcher. If everyone could vote now. Mr. Chair, District 3 votes aye. Thank you. And the motion carries 7-0. All right, moving on. We're going to move into advertised public hearings. This is a presentation scheduled for a community and veteran services. Who is presenting? Good morning. Good morning, Tracy Adams, Deputy Director, Community and Veteran Services. Um, good morning to you all. I'm hoping my reinforcements will be here soon and I'm going to tag team them in. <laughs> but I think you all have our slides. No, they were attached to the Um, 30, the Chair. online agenda. Do you want to take your break? Yeah, she can get through this. You're going to be pretty quick, right? What? How, how long is about your, your presentation? Yeah. Oh, how long is the presentation? Three minutes? Okay. <laughs> At best. Yeah. I just wanted to get through this before we went to the next item. That's okay. All right. All right, and I'm going to actually hand it over to Julia Vieira. All right, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Julia Vieira. I'm the Community Development Project Manager. Um, so we have a presentation. A slide presentation. If you want, she can just That's fine. talk the slides yeah, please, to you. Please move, please move forward. Thank My you. My apologies. So um, this public hearing today uh, is because we are required to have a public hearing in order to submit a substantial amendment to some of our action plans to reflect some of the resolutions uh, that uh, this board approved in the fall to um, shift some some money uh, from projects that were uh, canceled that no longer needed our funding to to be conducted to uh, new projects that were identified as uh, priority needs so here we go so very briefly um, so on slide two So um, our community development division uh, administers the uh, community, uh, the entitlement funds that the, the Manatee County receives from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development under com the Community Development Block Grant, the Home Investment Partnership, and uh, the Emergency Solutions Grant. So next slide, please. So uh, last fall, uh, the two resolutions that this board approved was uh, resolution 23157. So um, this resolution canceled uh, the first project, CHAF, Affordable Rental Housing Development, because this project didn't need uh, our funding anymore. They, they're carrying out the project with, with their own funding. And so this uh, funding was shifted towards uh, Habitat for Humanity Polling Gardens. And uh, with that funding, we'll develop five of the 16 units uh, that are going on the site. In addition, uh, the board uh, provided funding to uh, rehab the, the, the county's foster children shelter. And then uh, the last resolution is R23203. And that resolution approved uh, a new project is uh, the food food bank expansion pre-development costs. So these funds were identified from com 
completed projects um, that were successful. They just had some leftover funding. So next slide. So uh, the substantial amendments to the plans, they were required by um, HUD so they can reflect these project changes. As part of uh, these efforts, we also need to do a 30-day public comment period, which will end next week. And so in addition to this public hearing, we'll offer uh, the opportunity for the public to comment and ask questions. So next slide. So for today, we are asking the board to um, allow the public to make any comments or ask any questions and authorize our team to submit the substantial amendments to HUD so we can finally start those projects. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, before we have public comment, I'm, I need to read into the record authorization to submit substantial amendment to the 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2021, 22, and 22, 23 annual action plan. Is there any public comment on item 33? Seeing none, I'll close public comment and ask for a motion. Motion to approve by Commissioner Turner, seconded by Commissioner Cruz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 District 3 is aye. Thank you, sir. And the resolution carries 7 to 0. Thank you very much. Coming up next is our regular items for the agenda, and the first up is our county administrator. Yes, sir. This is just to allow me to uh, enter into the record adoption of the resolution. Let me get to it. Resolution R24-30, declaring a state of local emergency. As you recall, last board meeting, uh, we had the potential of a, of a storm that we want to be prepared for. This just allows us to clean up the record. All right. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> is there any public regarding public comment regarding the declaring the state of emergency resolution. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Uh, there's been a motion made by Commissioner Turner, seconded by Commissioner Satcher. All those in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Mr. Chairman, District 3 votes aye. Thank you, sir. And the resolution carries 7 to 0. Next up is our Community and Veterans Services which uh, the appointment of five applicants to the Library Advisory Board, who will be presenting for the advisory appointments. Good morning, uh, Tammy Parrott, Library Services Manager, Manatee County. So we have uh, four new seats to be filled and we have one seat that is being vacated by someone who's currently on the board this will bring the total board up to nine spots with four existing members remaining so we do have the uh, matrix i believe in front of you of the applicants okay and, and i believe we have at least one applicant for all of the new seats okay so are we going to do you want to speak to any of it or as being on the library board or or we just go ahead. So I, I will say uh, we, we do have several applicants for a couple of the seats. Um, I do think it's unfortunate that for a couple of the seats, we actually only have one applicant. Um, I don't know what the board's appetite would be to open it back up for a, for a little bit longer to see if we got uh, more than one applicant for, for some of those new seats. Um, so that's just... Mm -hmm. My, my question, just to you know, kind of pose to the board, would anybody be opposed to that, or are you all set to but, okay. move forward today? Right. Commissioner Turner? Mr. Chair, when I'm but, able. Yeah. Did you want to go yeah, first, KBO? Gonna... Commissioner, I'll be very quick, quick, quick sir. Area. So I'll be very quick, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm not particularly satisfied with the applicants on the list, uh, so I would favor opening this back up. Um, and the county sort of doing a little, giving a little harder push, um, put a little more um, effort into noticing folks that the, there are board opportunities on this particular board. So are you make, would that be a, an a motion for uh, are uh, you sure. asking to are you asking like to table and open back yeah. up the app, the application process for the library advisory board? Yes, yeah, so moved. Okay. Is, there, is there a second? Uh, Commissioner Bearden has seconded. <clears throat> I have a question to ask. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Tammy, I mean, you're you're more involved with this process. So uh, my question is, is this a really arduous process to, to get people to to come and play? I'm just wondering, you know. No, that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, this is the most robust, uh, actually, applicant pool I've seen since we've started working at the county, since I've started working at the county. Um, I was very pleased with the response. And uh, my only concern, and I would have, have to ask uh, Attorney Clegg to see, our current board expires at the end of January. So the new board was going to be seated in February and begin our work then. So that is my only concern, but the will of the board. So one other question, Tammy. So mm -hmm. um, to your knowledge then, these applicants you are satisfied with? I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of them personally, but I have reviewed their applications. Uh, I guess uh, the next question would be for Commissioner Van Ostenbridge to understand uh, why he's not satisfied with any of it, maybe before I make my decision. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, I don't mind responding to that. I don't see many uh, individuals on this list who are like-minded with this board. Okay. Does that satisfy you? Okay. Well, I mean, we have you have two seats that are expiring at the end of this month, or three, sorry, three seats. You have two that are expiring in 26, and then the, the four opens would expire in 28. So, realistically, she has a board that's expiring at the end. I mean, so it, it's um, what, what happens then if it expires? Could we ask the attorney? attorney? Yeah, Bill, please. I have to be honest with you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I don't know off the top of my head without taking a look at the ordinance that establishes the board. Um, it depends how the board is, how that is characterized, because it looks like you have three, according to the slide in the agenda item, that are going to expire, but you still have a majority left that don't expire at the end of the month. Is that correct? Thank you for the clarification. Actually, uh, you are correct. There are th three people leaving our five per or existing five-person board at the end of this month. Two are okay. uh, applicants right now to remain in their seats. And uh, one is retiring, so we were looking for five new board members. So that means that, let me see, let me do the, the high math here for a second. So if we do not confirm the returning um, uh, members of the board, and we do have one that's leaving, we'll be left with two board members. Okay, the slide shows nine seats. Nine seats, and uh, four of them are new. No. Yeah. Okay, and four are the new ones. I remember we did, yeah. I know Three we, of the five are expired. Yeah. Right. I would say the board's probably not going to be able to convene and do its job until you have a quorum of people on it that, that are at least a quorum, which is majority, mm -hmm. um, that are, have valid and existing appointments. So if you table this, and you can, that's the board's discretion, it may mean delaying the work of the advisory board until Tom. you've decided to to appoint a full slate is is there a way to reinstate the two that are looking for reinstatement and then you have two that are remaining for they don't expire till 26 and then you have two that are expiring right now uh, city of Braden, city of palmetto seats can you mr chairman i can i can answer that very yeah. quickly the answer is yes it's up yeah. to the board the motion is to table the whole thing okay but you don't have to do it that way you could be more selective and decide to reappoint some and then for the new seats to table those it's purely within the discretion of the board as the policy making board well account. i mean the motioner would have to yes change his motion and the seconder would have to agree um commissioner Austin, well, mr chairman I, i'm not i'm not willing to amend my motion um someone can make a hostile amendment if they like but i would rather the board not meet at all than have a board that uh is going to meet and make decisions that are not in line with this county commission Okay. Um, with that, we have a standing motion by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge to table the uh, um, to table the appointment of uh, the, the two existing to reinstate two existing and the additional five board members of the advisory board. The second by Commissioner Bearden. Um, we do need to call for public comment. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, so what I'd like to do right now before we vote on that, I would like to call for public comment. And after that, Commissioner Cruz is on the board. I'll let her speak. I know what you're going to say. 
Hi, Andrew Griffin, Manatee County activist. So there's a couple things that I'm thinking out here. You know, I have to agree with Van Austin Bridge, um, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. We need to have this, we've worked very hard to design this county to meet the majority of the people here in this county. And we, including myself, have fought, and I know this has nothing to do with the school district, you know, book, you know, schools access, children's access to books and stuff like that. So this is a very uh, important. I'm not a, a supporter of libraries. I think they're a dying breed. So I'm trying to remove that bias out of here and be reasonable. And I just think that this is a voluntary um, advisory board, if it needs to be, uh, we need the people that represent this community, not just who is available. And I have to agree with that. We're working too hard to try to correct this ship, to just start throwing people in there and not taking our time to do it right. And so that's just going to be my comments. You know the routine. <laughs> For the record, Glenn Giblin in Manatee County. Um, other side of the fence, Andrea. I couldn't disagree with this with this resolution, this uh, motion more. Here's the problem that we have. Advisory boards, first of all, they don't have any teeth, right? They can come to you and say, we want this, and you could 86 it. So I don't know what the big threat is here. I thought we're a democracy, and when you get an applicant, you're mad because not, not enough people are running for that position? I'm confused. You want to like steer the boat to what you want to multi. You have an outstanding employee who just said, I am happy with the applicants. So you're going to take her opinion and throw it to the side because apparently she has no value to this board. She can't even recommend the people that she's okay with. That's a slap in the face. You give these department heads the latitude to say, okay, I'm going to go over the applicants. I'm happy with them. You got some renegade commissioners going, oh, they don't think like us, so why would we have any diversity on the board? It's ab absolutely ridiculous. The time slot was open. She did a great job trying to get all the applicants that they want, and you're not happy because you didn't get your guy in there. I've seen your advisory boards, how you get them. You get a five applicants. Your guy, hey, I'll open it, I'll nominate it, you close it, boom, done. You don't even care about the other four. But you're mad now because there's only one. You need to go home and think about this. Do so we need to call up your buddy? Hey, that slot's open. I'm not happy with the applicant that's there. Have you even read the resume of the applicant in question? Have you? Or are you just not happy with it? I don't get it. Advisory boards. They applied. No one else had that. Nobody else did. Give them the job. It's pretty simple. But no, let's, let's, let's table it. Let's delay it because then the board won't have a quorum. People are leaving, just like I did, resigned from the Affordable Housing Board because you guys don't listen because it wasn't your guy. I find a slap in face to, to the department head and the employees. And she told you I'm happy with the applicants. Respect her position and her advisement for the record. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Cruz. I was going to I know it's getting tabled, but I mean, let, let's be honest. Th this was a better advertised application process than almost every advisory board we have. This was a public work session to announce these five seats, these, these additional seats. This was advertised on Twitter, advertised on Facebook. All of us knew about it. You could have called your friends and said, hey, don't forget to spend the 30 seconds it takes to apply for this position so we can slide you in. But we didn't. Two of the seats that are up, nobody else applied for. And one of the people had a 92% rate, a 92% attendance. The other one had 98% attendance. And she was there since 2017. That's unheard of. Our planning commission doesn't have that level of, of participation and attendance. These are people that clearly care. And my question is, if we've looked it up or not, this is not one of these advisory boards we just came up with for fun. This is a library board that's, that was created under a county ordinance associated with a millage that we're collecting. Do we know if there's any restrictions in terms of our ability to 
hold these meetings that are going to potentially impact the millage associated with this? Because or did we look into this ordinance ahead of time to say, hey, if we don't meet X number of times a month or if there's X amount of gap, that we run the risk of not being able to collect the millage on the taxes? I'm not saying we are, but has anyone looked into that? Are we just arbitrarily just canceling meetings from an advisory board that is tied to a specific millage? I, I think we need to check that ahead of time. There are two people that no one else applied. I think somebody made the request or suggestion that, hey, maybe we should at least reappoint those people because it gives us the majority, allows the board to operate. These are clearly people that care, who've been on the board for six, seven years, attending every meeting. Nobody else applied after months. I mean, this was last February, I think it was, we had this work set. You had a year to apply. You had a year. And one of the seats is literally for a librarian with a master of library science. How many people do you think you're going to get? How many, of, how many friends of people on this board are librarians with a master's of library science? There was three. The fact that there's three master's of library science people in Manatee County shocks me. We probably got every single one of them applied for this position. Just we're not going to fill these seats when they're, when they're that specific. The seat literally requires a librarian with a master of library science. It's part of the ordinance. It has nothing to do with ideology. I, I, there's three of them already applied. I think we had a good collection, more to your point, applicants than we have in most things. A lot of times it's one person, one person, one person. Affordable housing, we had one for every seat. Maybe we'll have one of them at two. So this is a good, I understand it's going to be tabled, but I think those first two seats, one and two, are people who put in the time, put in the effort, and it keeps a quorum. And until our attorney or somebody can verify that our ordinance does not run a risk of our millage that we're collecting associated with failure to meet, uh, I, I think it would be short-sighted just to arbitrarily table this without some verification of exactly what that ordinance says. May I speak for just a moment? Uh, when we have the four, if we do go with the two seats, and we will still not have a quorum because it's, it will then at that point be a nine-person board. It will be a nine-person board even before we appoint for the first time? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Commissioner Beard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, I, I can understand the, <clears throat> the overall concerns on this board um, regarding this sensitive subject, uh, ensuring that we have the proper people that are in place on this board because of the things that have happened within the last few years regarding libraries. I mean, it is what it is. So if commissioners are getting a check to take a step back, look at you know, the applicants, or maybe put it back out there on the street. I think that's a smart move in regards to ensuring that we are moving our county in the right direction the way that this board wants to do that, which is the majority of this board. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Are there any other comments by any other commissioners? All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Van Ossenbridge, a second by Commissioner Beard, to table to a motion to table um, the appointment of five applicants to the library board, if you cast your votes right now. Mr. Chair, District 3 votes aye. I couldn't figure that. Cast our votes. The motion table carries uh, six to one with Commissioner Cruz voting no. Um, with that, we're moving on to, thank you, Ms. Parrott. We're moving on to developmental services and the adoption of resolution R24026 budgeting and uh, appropriating legal, legally available funds for the Catalytic loan to the community assisted supported living uh, Inc. Castle, approving and authorizing the loan documents consistent with the executed uh, loan term letter dated January 9th, 2024, and the adoption of the budget amendment resolution B24051. And uh, Ms. Knapp. Oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I just ask, should we open this yes. and 37 together? Yes. yes, that sounds fine. Yes, sir, thank you. So we'll take com public comment on both. Okay, and then you may read 37 in the record. Execution of catalytic loan agreements between Manti County and the Community Assisted Supported Living, Inc. Castle, a not-for-profit corporation for the acquisition of 43-unit commercial development to be redeveloped into 60 Unit mixed use affordable housing development located at 8110 uh, Tammany Trail, Sarasota, Florida. The principal loan amount is 1750000 
Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Nicole Knapp, Development Services. And we're here today, um, as you've said, for items 37, 36, and 37. Um, because of actions made by the Board on December 12th of 2023 uh, to approve the items as you've read into the record. And so I'm going to actually turn it over to Ms. Rowena Elliott. She's going to give you an update, a short presentation of what's occurred since then on these two items. And there, um, Ms. Sheila uh, McLean is also in the back, Director of, um, or she, she um, <laughs> too many acronyms, <laughs> Chief Financial Officer for additional support on these items as well. Good morning, Commissioners and staff. For the record, we're Weena Young Gopi, Affordable Housing Development Coordinator. And as stated earlier by Ms. Knapp, the Board of County Commissioners at their December 12th meeting approved a catalytic loan to community assisted supported living in the amount of $1,750,000. The board also directed staff and the county attorney to negotiate the terms of the loan and the, to draft corresponding documents and bring back to the board for review and execution, and therefore we're here today. We also have Mr. Eller in the audience if you have questions going forward. Staff also worked with the finance department to draft a budget amendment resolution amending the annual budget for 2024 to allocate the sum for the, from the Southwest TIF. And that is just about what I have. If you have any questions regarding the terms and. Are there any questions uh, to our Marina on the catalytic loan to Castle? No, not a question. Okay, Commissioner Cruz. This has nothing to do specific with this, but uh, I mentioned it last time this came up as well. This is a great project. I believe this is great use of our funds. The economic benefits, the, the benefits to the community are, are, are tremendous. Whether we call it a catalytic loan agreement or we call it gap financing it's the same thing this is the third one since we stopped doing them uh, we did it with 920 we did it with nest i think this board is clearly seeing there are a time and a place where this is a good use of funds for the benefit of the community i'd like to uh you know hopefully have some of you reconsider the flat out ban on gap financing since we've used it three times since we banned it uh so our staff can look for more opportunities of this nature because I, I think this is great and i'd like more people to be willing to come forward and, and request uh similar programs thank you sir all right um right now before we go to a motion i would open it for public comment so we're opening it on 36 and 36, 36 and 37 for public comment Seeing none, I'll close public comment, and we're going to vote on you separately, correct? Yes. Mr. Chair? I mean, Mr. County Attorney? Yes, we need to do the two separate motions. Okay. I think they're both in your system. Yep. There's been a motion on item 36, a motion uh, to approve by Commissioner Ballard, seconded by Commissioner Bearden. Do you have it on your screen? I yeah. don't. I got it on my screen. I don't have it on my screen. No, All right, we we're going to... Um, I did, and then it, and then it it's, disappeared. Uh, and we're going to do is just do a verbal vote. Yeah, um, all those in favor of item 36, say aye. 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 District 3 votes aye. Chair says aye. Any opposed? No. The motion on thir item 36 carries. Item 37. Motion to approve. Motion, okay. to, motion to approve by Commissioner Turner. Seconded by Commissioner Bearden. By voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? District 3 votes aye. Thank you, sir. On the board now. That's on we're now th th item 37 carries um, seven to zero that thank you Rena thank you. congratulations thank you guys for bringing this project forward it's gonna be great for district four and it's gonna be great for the citizens of Mantee County so thank you very much appreciate it all right um, going on is there um, do we need to we read citizens comment um, is there any, there's there's no uh, Commissioner agenda items moving forward. County Attorney, do you have anything? No, sir, I do not. County Administrator, do you have anything? No, sir, I do not. Are there any Commissioner comments? We don't have a 38. We don't have a 38. Yeah, move to consent. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Seeing, there, um, seeing there's no Commissioner comments, we will move to adjourn. Thank you very much, and we appreciate everyone being here today. Good meeting.